Hi, uh, this is Murph, and I will show you how to create um, an iSCSI uh, uh, target uh, virtual disk on Windows 2012 server. Uh, this is a VM hosted on the uh, Windows Azure Cloud, so basically uh, I got access to this Windows Azure Cloud uh, VM for free for three months, so I'm just making use of, uh, of it uh, and to learn a lot of things uh, about Windows 2012. Uh, so that's pretty great uh, about Microsoft. Um, so, um, I'm going to go to the full screen mode so that we can see it uh, larger. So, um, I go to Server Manager and uh, File and Storage Services and iSCSI. And there's a section called iSCSI. So, you have to, if you don't have it, you probably have to, you have to uh, uh, add as a role here under Add Roles uh, and Features. And uh, go Next, Next. It's under file and the storage uh, services, and you expand that. You have to uh, add this iSCSI target server, uh, this two iSCSI uh, component uh, added. Once you do that, you should see that iSCSI option here. So I'm just going to go to file and storage service again, and then we'll go iSCSI. Um, now, once you go there, you go to the iSCSI virtual disk and you go to tasks uh, and then click uh, new iSCSI virtual disk. The import one is for if you if you have an iSCSI disk shared from a different iSCSI target, you can import that. Uh, but this is we are making this uh, server as iSCSI target. Um, as you probably know, iSCSI, uh, with iSCSI, you basically uh, can uh, create uh, iSCSI disk, which basically uh, you can present to servers uh, uh, as a raw disk um, over the TCP/IP network. So that's pretty uh, great. If you don't have a you know expensive fiber channel infrastructure, so you can make use of uh, iSCSI uh, target uh, uh, feature of the Windows 2012 um, through software. And then you can, uh, if you have say for example VM or ESX server, which you need iSCSI disk, which you want to use uh, mount uh, the the disk and 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 uh, create. Uh, VMFS data store or uh, Hyper-V or Zen, uh, you should all do that and as a raw disk. Um, so um, I choose uh, the volume D here where I'm going to create my iSCSI disk and I'll choose the default and click next. I'll give it a name, um, say LAN1. So it looks like it creates as a virtual VHD file. Um, so uh, this is a file based iSCSI uh, target looks like um, so I'm gonna say I think uh, yeah so, uh, so I, I, I'll call LAN1 because uh, LAN stands for logical unit number so when you create iSCSI target it's better to call it LAN123 uh, uh, so that you know you know uh, that that's the best practice but you can name it anything you want for your you know convenience so next and let's give it a size let's say 10 gigabyte assign the iSCSI virtual disk to an existing target since I don't have any iSCSI target uh, created so I will create a new one so iSCSI target is a basically a server uh, or target where the initiator so your client so you see if you have Windows 2000 uh, uh, 12 another server or VMware server that will be a client or a, a, we call it uh, uh, iSCSI initiator that will connect this target okay target name say uh, win 2012 Azure uh, uh, description I don't need a description for test but you can do so if you want and click add to specify iSCSI initiator that will access this. So you can uh, say you have two or three servers and you only want to give access to a specific server. Um, so for example in VMware uh, you can go to the storage option and you can get the iSCSI uh, initiator name and you can basically uh, add that name here if you want. Uh, you can also query looks like uh, uh, but uh, you can also uh, you know add your own initiator name here. So in this case I don't want to give any so uh, uh, hopefully it will be able to visible. It, it will be visible by all the servers on the network. But looks like oh no, looks like I have to give it a name. Let's see. Don't think I have any. Let's see.
so I can I can even um, select a an IP address so let's say I'm gonna give uh, iSCSI initiator iSCSI access to um, to 192 168 1 100 so uh, by doing so uh, if, if, if there is a host that is with this IP address that host can access this uh, iSCSI target so say well, okay and click next you can enable uh, CHAP authentication, uh, reverse CHAP, that's for security. If you are doing it in a production environment, I would say, you know, uh, go for these uh, options because that makes it more secure. Otherwise, you know, anybody can spoof an IP address somehow and then uh, uh, there, there are ways that they can, you know, hack in. So better to enable this authentication mechanism. But for, m for my test, I'm not going to do that. Uh, CHAP is a, channel, uh, is a challenge handshake pr uh, access protocol. So. Uh, can learn more about it if you want. So here's the summary, and I'll click on create. Close. Okay, so here is my iSCSI. Um, it's created already. So here is the target uh, information. Uh, it's right now nobody's connected uh, so uh, and the initiator ID has to be in on this IP address uh, and then I should be able to connect so if I have a uh, you know say for example in VMware uh, I can ESX server I can uh, enable the iSCSI uh, software adapter if I use software or if it's hardware on there I will put uh, this IP address of this uh, iSCSI server uh, and then I should be able to discover this disk on the server when I do a uh, HBI scan I think similarly you should be able to do on a, a, a Hyper-V and Zen uh, or KVM based hypervisor but uh, this can be very handy uh, if you are using your uh, Windows 2012 as a uh, storage server uh, for your storage services. Uh, hopefully this video helps you. Uh, I will see if I can do a, a later video where I will show you connecting to this iSCSI disk but I will uh, yeah, just keep, uh, I'll keep it posted on the video uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.